Hello everybody, I am back here for another movie review, and this time I'm going to review a movie that I actually, uh, I still find hard to believe that it's directed by the same filmmaker who made some of the greatest horror films in history, and this is Escape from New York. Escape from New York is a sci-fi action-adventure film that came out back in 1981 by veteran filmmaker John Carpenter, who once again ha has proved time and time again that this guy is not just a master of horror, but he is a master filmmaker. Yeah, Escape from New York, being directed by the same guy who made Halloween, The Fog, and The Thing. Well, this actually came out a year before The Thing did, so... So, for anybody who is not familiar with this film, I will describe the plot of it as best I can. The year is 1997, and the city of New York has basically become a maximum security prison, where they basically send the worst of the worst inmates into this city. Basically, the whole city is, you know, there's no bars, there's no jail cells. It's basically, the city itself is like a ruined wasteland. You can just do whatever you want there and just do whatever you can to survive, unfortunately. Well, all that's going on, Air Force One, which is carrying the President of the United States, ends up crashing into New York thanks to it being taken over by terrorists. And not before, but not before he uh, jettisons in an escape pod before the plane crashes. So now the President is stuck in the city of New York, surrounded by all these prisoners and inmates. And the U.S. government kind of have no really the only <laughs> their last resort is they turn to an in uh, a convicted felon named Snake Plissken played in the film by Kurt Russell which is him by there right there by the way as uh he is the only one that is capable of getting into New York and rescuing the president and he has to do so within 24 hours for two reasons one is there is a uh, summit meeting that the president has to get to in order to restore peace across the world and the other is uh, in order to make sure that Snake Plissken doesn't, you know, get in a plane and just fly to another country, they implanted they implant two capsules into his neck that will explode and kill him in 24 hours unless he gets the president out safely. So, <laughs> so he has no choice but to go into the heart of New York to basically find the president and get him out safely in 24 hours. And while he's in New York, he ends up uh, being helped by allies and some friends and ultimately ends up contending with the Duke, played by Isaac Hayes, who ultimately, uh, who basically is the top dog in New York. <laughs> so that's pretty much the plot of the movie in a nutshell, but when this movie first came out, this movie really was a true one-of-a-kind film. It really was. I mean... The fact that John, this was actually one of the first big budgets that John Carpenter had ever gotten a chance to be involved with. I mean, from the looks of the movie, you can definitely tell that he's not, John Carpenter is the filmmaker that's not normally known for doing low, high budgeted movies. Much like Roger Corman, he prefers to do lower budgeted films because, and he also prefers to do independent stuff because he, you know, when you, well, when you do independent films, you actually get more free reign to do what you want in the film. When you're doing a Hollywood movie, your reign is very limited because the producers, in the end, do get the final say on what they want in the film. So Escape from New York is one of those movies that, you know, John Carpenter did kind of have full reign to do whatever he wanted. And in the end, however, he made a one-of-a-kind film that really stands the test of time, and it still holds up to this date as a, as a well-made action sci-fi movie. And it definitely made a star out of Kurt Russell, since his Snake Plissken has, uh, he's been considered one of the greatest action heroes of, its, of his time. And the film was, believe it or not, rather successful at the box office. On a budget of $6 million, in the States alone, it grossed $25 million domestically, so the movie was a profitable hit. And uh, ultimately, and the film was very well received by critics getting an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes, and uh, it's still considered one of the best uh, sci-fi action films, even to this day. And it even got a sequel, which came out uh, 15 years later in 1996, which was Escape from L.A. I'll get to that one in another time. Um, some of the people that worked on the film, uh, believe it or not, one of the uh, DPs, the directors of photography and special effects, hard to believe, was James Cameron. Yes, 
James Cameron actually worked with John Carpenter on Escape from New York, as well as his uh, eventual effects supervisor, Bob Skotak, who uh, would go on to work with him on Aliens and Terminator 2, and I have already mentioned this in my Battle Beyond the Stars video previously. Uh, the movie does feature tons of regulars and tons of big-name actors in this movie alone. I mean, the President of the United States is played by Donald Pleasance, who is Sam Loomis in Halloween. The movie also stars the uh, legendary uh, Western actor Lee Van Cleef, who uh, I'm actually amazed John Carpenter managed to get in the movie because Lee Van Cleef had been in a lot of, uh, well... Some of the most famous westerns he did were uh, for a few dollars more, and also famously did uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly with Clint Eastwood. Well, I'm actually starting to see the reason why John Carpenter cast Lee Van Cleef, because John Carpenter, one of his favorite film genres, is westerns. He loves the western genre, and no wonder why he cast Lee Van Cleef. Also, uh, I think there's a... Uh, yeah, there's Lee Van Cleef right there in the movie. I still find that amazing that he got him in that movie. And also uh, Ernest Borgnine, Adrian Barbeau, Harry Dean Stanton. Adrian Barbeau was a regular John Carpenter at that point. She worked with him on a couple of films, uh, Someone's Watching Me and uh, The Fog up to that point. And of course Adrian Barbeau would go on to be in Creep Show, Swamp Thing, and of course be the voice of Catwoman for the Batman animated series. Harry Dean Stanton, who just came off of working on Alien, and would go on to work with John Carpenter yet again for Christine. And Ernest Borgnine, who worked with Wes Craven the same year this came out in Deadly Blessing. And of course, a lot of other regulars. Tom Atkins, he's in the film. Uh, Charles Cyphers, who have both uh, worked with uh, John Carpenter at one point. They both appeared in The Fog. And of course, the legendary Isaac Hayes, who is best known as the uh, the singer of the theme song from the movie Shaft, which won him an Academy Award for Best Original Song. And of course, Isaac Hayes would go on to be best known as the voice of Chef in the South Park series. So yeah, Escape from New York really, truly is a one-of-a-kind film. <laughs> this movie has so many big-name actors in it, it's ridiculous. And of course, Kurt Russell getting a... Uh, headlining all of them, pretty much. This film has also been quite an influence. Uh, Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima has often referred to Escape from New York as his biggest influence on the creation of the Metal Gear Solid series. Which I can understand why, because, uh, well, I mean, look at Kurt Russell. He has almost a lot of similarities to Solid Snake. Not to mention Snake Plissken, Solid Snake. And, not, and he's wearing an eye patch. Solid Snake kind of wore an eye patch. He even had the sneer and the uh, low sounding voice like Snake Plissken, I mean, like uh, Solid Snake has. And even in the one Metal Gear game, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, Solid Snake actually goes under the pseudonym Plissken. And also, filmmaker Robert Rodriguez was so influenced by Escape from New York that this movie was what was what convinced him to pursue filmmaking. So, there are a lot of filmmakers out there that have said one movie has highly influenced them. Like for James Cameron, the movie that influenced him to go into filmmaking was Star Wars. But for Robert Rodriguez, it was Escape from New York. I want to say for M. Night Shyamalan, I think the movie that convinced him to go into filmmaking was Raiders of the Lost Ark. For Peter Jackson, it was King Kong. But for Robert Rodriguez, Escape from New York. So, let's talk about the Blu-ray. This uh, Blu-ray I have here is the Collector's Edition release by Shao Factory. And uh, this is, uh, obviously, this is not the only release of the film. I actually have owned a DVD release prior to Escape from New York. There was a two-disc Collector's Edition release released by MGM on DVD. That actually was not a bad version of the film, but... So this is the Shao Factory version. Yeah, inside here is two discs. Uh, the first disc is the movie. The second disc is the bonus features. And uh, yeah, inside here is the reversible cover sleeve that Shell Factory made specifically for the movie. And uh, the one I have on the front, this is the actual uh, theatrical poster art. This is the ver this is the poster art that I actually prefer of the movie. Oh, by the way, the uh, 
head of the Statue of Liberty, also in, on the front cover, also inspired uh, J.J. Abrams when he did uh, Cloverfield in 2008, which, by the way, he didn't direct, but he did produce it. And the scene in the movie where the head of the Statue of Liberty comes flying into the crowd is basically a direct influence to what you see right here. Except in the movie, the head of the Statue of Liberty on the front cover here for Escape from New York is in finer shape than what you see in Cloverfield. <laughs> in the Cloverfield, when it gets thrown into the street, it's literally clawed to pieces. But at least here, it looks more intact. So, for the video quality on the disc, honestly, Shout Factory did a fairly decent job in restoring the film as best as they could up to that point. Um, the picture is still rather grainy, and well, not grainy, but it kind of feels murky and muggy the whole time. But then again, Escape from New York is a dark movie. I mean, John Carpenter is known for doing dark films, like, you know, being shrouded in darkness, but that's not, that's not a bad thing, but it definitely adds tension and suspense. And, it, and this is meant to be a murky and dark film, and it really shows it pretty much all the way throughout the entire movie. So, for five star, out of five stars, I would probably give the video a three and a half. I mean, overall, it's still a good presentation of the film, but at the same time, you know it, it could be a little better. As for the audio, it's pretty pulsating, I will say that. It definitely sounds good. The 5.1 track on the, the Blu-ray is pretty impressive. I mean, there are some spots where I had a little trouble trying to figure out what's going on because, you know, the audio, it keeps booming in the background and the, some of the dialogue, you know, it's kind of hard to figure, it's kind of hard to make out what's going on. But at least there's two different audio tracks to choose from. You get, yeah. Or I guess 5.1 is the only one. You know, it's funny because when I looked at the audio tracks on the actual Blu-ray menu, there was a 2.0 track. And I don't know why it doesn't have that on the back here. It doesn't. It doesn't talk, it doesn't mention it and by the way two three five by one that's the that's the preferred aspect ratio that John Carpenter likes to shoot all his movies in there's only like one or two films he shot that do not have the Panavision ratio like this but every other movie he directed has that Panavision format all of them do because he prefers that so for the audio out of five stars I'd say four and a half out of five. As for the bonus features, well, as I've meant, as I've already shown the Blu-ray case here, there's two discs, and thankfully uh, it's not a DVD copy. The second disc is bonus features. The movie disc, uh, well, there are extras on it, but not many. Well, there's not one, not two, but three audio commentaries to listen to. A new one with actress Adrian Barbeau and uh, DP Dean Cundy, who... Uh, Dean Cundy, by the way, is another John Carpenter regular. In fact, uh, uh, as, as mentioned in my Rock and Roll High School video, I should have mentioned uh, Dean Cundy was the DP for that movie, believe it or not. And he's been the DP for a lot of John Carpenter movies. He also he shot Halloween, he shot The Fog, and he also shot, he would have gone on to shoot The Thing. Uh, and the other two commentaries were actually from the previous releases. There's one with uh, John Carpenter and Kurt Russell, and this is not the only commentary they recorded. They recorded commentary for uh, uh, The Thing, and they also did a commentary for Big Trouble in Little China. Big Trouble in Little China. That might be another one I'll get to at another point. And the other commentary is with producer Deborah Hill, who also is a longtime collaborator of John Carpenter, and production designer Joe Alves. Joe Alves, by the way, is the uh, production designer on Jaws. And he would go on to direct Jaws 3, two years after Escape from New York. So there's three commentaries to listen to, and they're all pretty informative, but honestly, I would say the one with John Carpenter and Kurt Russell is the most entertaining, because when you get these two guys together, it's fun to hear them talk about the movie so much. And disc two has all the other extras, a bunch of uh, behind-the-scenes stuff, new look at the, at the special effects, interviews with Robert Skotak, Dennis Skotak, and more. New interview with uh, still photographer Kim Gottlieb Walker, author of On Set with John Carpenter. There's a deleted scene, the original opening bank robbery sequence, which is uh, how Snake Plissken got thrown into prison because he robbed a bank. Return to Escape from New York featurette. It's, uh, I think it's a, uh, I want to say one of the features on the disc here is uh, an EP, is a EPK, I think, that was made during the production of the movie. But Return to... Might be a new one, I'm not sure. 
theatrical trailers, photo galleries, and there's plenty more. Although it doesn't look like much, but what's on here, though, is pretty, uh, there's a pretty decent wealth of material. But yeah, the three commentaries alone, that's a pretty, that's a pretty impressive lineup right there. And, and again, some of the, some of Shell Factory's releases impress me to this day. Some of them do, and some of them you know could have been a little better, but for the most part, Shell Factory does a solid job of putting out some of their great, some great titles on the Blu-ray. And so, for that case, this definitely deserves the Collector's Edition Marco market on the top. So, for the bonus features, I would say out of five stars, I would probably give it a four. As for the movie itself, I would definitely give it a solid, I would definitely give it a four and a half out of five. Because the movie itself is just so memorable. It's a cult favorite. I mean, it was actually a decent hit when it came out. So, this movie is just virtually iconic in every way. And as I've said before, it still boggles my mind that this movie was directed by the same filmmaker that made Halloween, The Fog, and The Thing. And a guy that's more known for doing horror films more than anything else, and yet, out of the blue, he puts out this sci-fi wonder. Yeah, science fiction, because it is. It's set in 97, which, by the way, happened, uh, ooh, 25 years ago. Yeah. Literally, 25 years ago. Hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's hard to believe. 1997 is the 25th anniversary, and Escape from New York came out in 81. So this movie is now 31 years old. I mean, no, 41 years old. Sorry. So uh, overall, this is actually a pretty solid release of the movie, although there is a 4K version available for Escape from New York, also by Shell Factory. I don't know if it's more... It might be a bit more expensive than this one, but you can get this one for probably about 20 bucks on Amazon. Either way, whichever way you prefer to get the movie, it's totally up to you. The 4K version also offers a regular Blu-ray itself. I don't own a 4K TV as of yet, so I have no intention to go into 4K. I'm perfectly happy still with Blu-ray, so honestly, this is a pretty solid release of the film. The video quality, while it holds up very well, I, it w I wish it could have been a little sharper, but for the most part, it it retains the film's uh, murky prowess very well. As for the audio, it's pulse pounding and it sounds great. And as a two disc collector's edition, it comes loaded with bonus material, loads of stuff. So this is a very solid release of the film, highly recommended. As for the movie itself, it gets a pass with flying collars, of course. This movie is virtually iconic in every way. And Kurt Russell literally gave us one of the most memorable characters of all his uh of his entire film career literally so anyway this concludes the presentation i hope you enjoyed watching it and uh i will continue to put more and more videos out in the days to come and don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel at watson 87 unknown so until then everybody take care and be safe